The Fish in Canada Show is brought to you in part by MyOutdoorTV.com Outdoor television on the internet Stearns, the life jacket experts The Rocket Fishing Rod And RadioWorld.ca Together we'll go fishing again one of the best ways of keeping a healthy diet is to switch to grilled food. In fact, as soon as we mention grilled food, our mind brightens up because grilled food is always associated with outdoor cooking and fun. There's no better feeling than lighting the barbecue, grabbing a stack of burgers, and hearing that wonderful sizzle while anticipating a great meal. With advancements in portable gas grills, you can create culinary opportunities almost anywhere in the great outdoors, be it the bank of a tiny trout stream, a full-scale picnic area, or even the balcony of your apartment complex. Grilling has become a year-round tradition, and we all look forward to inviting family and friends over to spend some time together along with good food. We can enjoy our favorite foods without having to worry about the health risks that are associated with fatty fried food. Grilling is also beneficial in that it can reduce summer energy costs. Cooking on a stove or using your kitchen oven, even for about an hour a day, can raise the overall temperature in your home by as much as 4 degrees. Heating caused by using your oven or stove makes it more difficult for your air conditioning thermostat to maintain proper room temperature. Whether it's for health reasons, environmental concerns, or just the fact that it's a lot of fun, Outdoor grilling is a great way to get outside. Over the years, I've experienced pretty much everything one could expect from the outdoors. I've caught just about every species of fish that swims, have walked on pretty much every continent, and had close encounters with a vast variety of wildlife. On this episode, we're gonna to add to that list. Catching fish for a living is a pretty good gig, but for me, the best part is the travel. Like on today's show, we're taking a train from a small settlement just east of Wawa, Ontario, called Hawk Junction. The train is one of the best ways to get to some of Ontario's hidden gems. No roads, no cars, only hundreds of miles of pure wilderness. Which is where we're heading, to Arrington's Wilderness Resort a luxury lodge with five-star service and plenty of walleye, wildlife and scenery that will have you wanting to book your trip before this episode even ends. Arrington's is a welcoming place, from the dock hands and waiting staff to the variety of guests that visit here from all over the continent. We felt like family the minute we stepped on land. Good to see you. Angelo. Our hosts, Al and Doris Arrington, have created the ultimate wilderness getaway. It's got all the comforts of home. Wow, that's all people say, I'm sure, when they walk into this room. Yeah. Spectacular. Just great. And we've heard uh, nothing but good things about this place. The fishing is outstanding. The accommodations are obviously great. But the food, people are raving about the food here. We don't like to people go hungry, actually. We <laughs> like people enjoy their food. Okay, I have to tell you a little something. I've been on a diet <clears throat> for a while. Uh, so I got to go easy on the food here. Huh? That might, well, we'll see what we can do. That might be a problem over here. <laughs> I always have a problem, believe me. <laughs> so we're going to be fishing mostly for uh, walleye and pike um, early in the season, obviously. Uh, how is it this time of year? This is the best walleye time. This is, is uh, lots of action for walleyes. Um, just, just numbers, uh, lots to eat, and just you can catch walleye basically all day. 
On the way in, when we were coming in, you notice there's a lot of points and humps and shoals and stuff. Obviously, it's the regular walleye fishing, just find a rock. And I think it's superior, actually. We've got really great walleye habitat here. It, I mean, it's a very sheltered lake because of all the, all the islands and bays and stuff like that. And we have lots of reefs, sandbars, river creeks coming in. It's just like fantastic walleye habitat. My family uh, bought this resort as a basically a very rundown bunch of shacks back in 1975. It was pretty tough the first few years. A few years, my dad was an iron worker. He kept iron working in the in the winters to to keep things going for the first few years. He always had the dream of uh, of just uh, having a place where he could hunt and fish whenever he wanted to and make make money at the same time. We found out very quickly is that this is a lot of work and you don't fish <laughs> when you're doing it. So. We had a lot of rustic cabins when we first uh, took over the business and that was good for people that just wanted to come and fish and do nothing else. So they were basically sleeping in the cabin and fishing um, pretty much all day. Uh, but times have changed now and everybody enjoys those comforts and the ambiance that goes with it. So the cabins are log cabins, uh, there's indoor plumbing, there's hot and cold running water. Um, it's a place where you can actually go and you can spend time in. We have our Adirondack chairs at the end of our docks, and that in itself is an experience, just to be able to go and sit down at the end of the dock and just enjoy the scenery. We consider ourselves a wilderness vacation resort, which means it's, it's a place to come up and really enjoy everything there is about nature, from fishing and enjoying shore lunches and that kind of stuff to watching bear and moose and, and learning about uh, ospreys and eagles and loons. It's a whole diverse experience. It's, it's really getting in touch with nature. And I think for the most part, people are really missing that in, in this today's world. They, they're, we're finding more people are just disconnected from nature. Oh, he gets you over there. <laughs> you good? Yeah, get the yeah, yeah, Edinburgh all set to go here. Woo hoo hoo. Where else can you catch fish? A this million bag? of these out here. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of fishermen that come in the spring and then we start going into families in the summer. Um, but the thing I find the most is we get a lot of related uh, individuals. So we'll get uh, fathers, grandfathers, grandsons, uh, families will come up that will be multi-generational as well. And I think it's just a wonderful opportunity, especially when you've got children, that you can actually put them into a boat where there's no other distractions, and then you get to get you get to have the opportunity to know them. Children that used to come up 20, 30 years ago are now coming up with their kids, so it's a wonderful experience. This is a very, very easy lake to fish. For people first time on the lake. They used to get a guide for about a day or a half day just to get them oriented, get them in, into the fishing techniques that, that work really well on this, on this lake, get them oriented on the lake a bit. But it's shallow fishing, it's very easy fishing. Uh, they learn it very, very quickly. Um, so that they, uh, they, they just get into it very, very, very quickly. Um, our repeat guests that have been coming up for a long time, we have guests that have been coming up for 30, 40 years. So they, uh, they know this like some ways a lot better than I do even. So. They don't, they don't bother with guides after a while, it's just because the fishing is that easy to do. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> Got him! That's a, the, the white, that's a fish you want to eat right there, but that's, that's the perfect it size eating, isn't it? We are train in or plane in only, and um, we use a local air service, uh, Hawk Air, to uh, deliver our guests in by plane, and they can pretty much decide whenever they want to to come in at whatever time, as long as it's daylight hours. And with the train, we have uh, three days per week that we have the train coming in. And people can come in either from Sault Ste. Marie, or they can drive up along Highway 17, which is highly recommended, because the scenery is so gorgeous between um, Sault Ste. Marie and Wawa. And then they can catch the train in from Park Junction. Now what they also can do is they can also train in and fly out, or they can do vice versa. Uh, we're a fairly small resort and we, we like it that way because we like the intimate atmosphere. We like to get to know our guests and really uh, and interact with our guests. So a big week for us is like 35 people, 35, 40 people, and we can really take care of them.
only well, if they ever we're operating on two islands on the lake and they're only about uh, five minutes apart by boat. Um, and we have our cabins all distributed along the shoreline. So all our accommodation is very secluded and they have great, they have great views of the lake, own private docks. It's uh, and very, very comfortable. To survive the outdoors, you first have to separate fact from fiction. You see, there's people out there who actually believe you can develop an immunity to black flies by actually eating them. It's true, there's a story of a guy who rode across the country on horseback a few years ago and he wore a big black hat to attract black flies to it. As they would gather on his hat, he'd sweep them up and eat them to build his immunity. Whether this story is true or not is still subject to debate. But one thing's for sure, you ain't gonna catch me eating flies anytime soon. Mm. And there's also stories that if you stay on the move, black flies can't catch you because they're slow. Well, I'm a lot like a black fly, and running a marathon to get to my favorite fishing hole is definitely out of the question. The fact is, there's only one proven way to prevent black flies from actually biting you, and that's by wearing a repellent that contains DEET, like muscal. It's serious bug protection. Nice walleye. Oh, get him over to the side here. Part of the wilderness experience is exploring a lake and searching for yeah, what might be the perfect honey hole. There he is. Right hey, where he should have been. that's my fish. Right where he should have been on Ivan's Rock. You didn't let me get I told the, you. You're not allowed to cast here. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's a nice hey, eye. Look, that's yeah. a beauty. Those are better quality, buddy. Here's the ones we're going to be eating for lunch in about an hour. I think so. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Catch him too. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, I got what one. Too. Look at that. That's a nice one. <laughs> you are a goon. Oh, I lost oh, him. <laughs> you are a goon of goons. That was goons. my fish. That's a big one. Oh, man. <sighs> you are a goon of goons. I wanted to get that one. Mike and I spent a day running from one end of the lake to the other in search of catchable walleye and sharing a few laughs along the way. Oh. I didn't know that's how you put leeches on. Oh. So what do you do, get them to suck a little bit of your blood first? Yeah. Oh. Now the trick is <laughs> get them from there to that hook. That's the trick. What do you do, put it through your hand? Well, you kind of go, oh. Wow. Oh. Got me. Okay. Now watch. You watching? You watching? Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know whether you know anything about physics or not. But you see this end of the boat, the point pointing yes. to the boat? They didn't put that on there because they ran out of square ends. All right. They put it on there because that's supposed to be the front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are in the front. I'm fishing in the back. And we're going backwards. Oh well. I'm it's a strategy. It's called back trolling. You see, you oh. use the resistance on the flat portion of the boat to slow you down. How am I supposed wind. to fish from here? How am I supposed to fish? Isn't oh, it good? buddy. It might be a pike. No, it's got a bit of a head shake. Oh, that's a walleye. If I ever seen a walleye. No, no, it's got to be a pike. Walleye pike. Yeah, it's a pike. Oh, it's a pike. <laughs> no. Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, I saw some white there. Yeah, it's a spotted, did you see a spotted spot? walleye? Did you see it? Whoa. Long nosed mountain trout. Did, no, seriously, did you see a spot on his tail? Seen some spots. No. Of <laughs> Not. Oh, oh, that's no. a respectable little gator. That is a nice gator on six pound <laughs> line. Oh, it's okay, you just go ahead and fish there, buddy. I don't need a hand, buddy. Let me get one. Let me get one here. I don't need any help, buddy. It's okay. Oh, okay then, fine. <laughs> Get the net out here, you net, goof. bring them back here. I'll show you how to land them. I saw this on TV once. <laughs> here. I don't want, that's the last jig I've got in yellow. Oh, so, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last one. Don't lose. I see the head, jig head still sticking out a bit. Where is he? I don't want to stand up. It's dangerous to stand up in the boat. Bring him back, buddy. Oh, yeah. Head first into the net, folks. He's backing up. I yeah, baby. Him. Wow, it's a chunky <laughs> pike. Uh, wow. Take it easy. Oh. That is a nice gator. Oh, watch your finger. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Thanks for the jig, buddy. <laughs> he hurted my finger. <laughs> Good work. Hey, 
We can be blood brothers. She go. Look at him coming at you. Oh, I thought he was coming at me. Look at that, I got a fish right in the rocks. No way. <laughs> Any size? Not a bad little Walter. <laughs> I got your lunch right here. Wow, I've never seen that. Have you ever seen a gull nest? No. I've never. That's a first. Well, usually I thought they were up on cliffs, but I That's, guess that could be considered a cliff. That is a first, man. Look at that. Look at how, look how this fish ate that jig. Don't do this at home, folks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a trained professional. <laughs> Every one of these fish is snapping that bait and I'm catching them in the front lip. They're twins, triplets, quadruplets. Good old pickerels. People at home be going crazy watching this show. Why aren't they keeping some of those to eat? Wait do you see the shore lunch we have. <laughs> Not your traditional one, I tell you that. Once Ange and I figured out what the walleye were doing on the lake, it was pretty much child's play. They are beauty fish though, huh? <laughs> awesome. We would use the wind to our advantage, back trolling and drifting across points that had huge boulders. We would simply cast our jigs to the backside of rocks and get slammed by aggressive walleye in the odd white fish. Now I got you figured what? out. As soon as you cast that, whoa! Now I got there you figured go. out. There oh, that's go. nice. Oh, that's a nice one. That's the monster, boys. Boy, you might want to put a net under that yep. feature. There's another one. Double header, brother. We found it. There's sticks in there. We found it. I got a good one on in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a nice. Look at the size of this thing. Oh, these are great. Look at them wallow. Look at that. You want the net, buddy? Nope. nope. That's not net worthy yet. Double header. Just like that. Back to back. Look at this thing, Mikey. Look at his. <laughs> That's a nice That's walleye. Cute. Man, oh man. And they're stacked right behind this one boulder. It's got to be a little bowl or something in there. They are just lined in there. Beautiful. <laughs> that was awesome. That was you great. You found eh? a little spot. <laughs> Two or three times I cat, I just was gonna tell you. Yeah, yeah, I, I bet you were. I was just gonna tell you, Oh, I'll bet you were. I'll bet you were. I'll bet you were just about. Send me a telegram. Yeah. I watched you. I watched you. We have been here for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, caught a few stragglers, and then, wham! You always find that spot on the spot. <laughs> I just pulled two out and just got a nice one. What was that? Two, three pounds at least. Mike and I were told not to bring back any fish and to definitely not snack on the boat. We were to meet the crew and some other guests on an island for a gourmet shore lunch. Ah, hey, what's on the menu? This is the way a shore lunch should be, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Look at this, all ready Show for up. no washing fish. Steak and baked potato and apple pie for dessert. Yeah. Well, apple pie. Apple yeah. pie. What a trip. Great fishing, gourmet meals. Arrington's <laughs> yeah. Wilderness Resort is truly a wild experience. Yeah. Came now, right away. No, yeah. it doesn't get any better than that, boys. <laughs> it just does not exist. Nope. Let me tell you. Pass it around. Talk about a feast. That was one of the most memorable lunches I could recall in a long time. And the overwhelming temptation to head back to the lodge and take a nap was creeping in. <laughs> However, after lunch, we were promised that we would get the royal tour of the lake and be witness to one of the most surreal wilderness encounters either of us has ever had. We were going to have dessert with black bears. I hope they didn't mean be dessert. Yeah. <laughs> now, what are they eating? They're picking through the stuff. They seem to be yeah. very selective. They're looking, for, they're looking for the sugary stuff like carrots and stuff like that. They like potatoes. They also like the fattier fish, actually. Every once in a while, we, uh, we'll, uh, somebody will bring in a sucker and we'll leave them, and they love the suckers. This keeps the, uh, the, uh, it keeps the attraction off our island. 
and over here. So, but and a great way to get rid of waste. <laughs> yep. You know, I mean, think about it. We're, in the cities, we've got this whole uh, ecosystem set up where we're disposing of our compostable, compostable products in one bag. And I, here's the way to do it. Well, I call them black bear composters. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, if I could sell it somewhere. <laughs> no kidding. This was too much. Standing inches away from a black bear and her cubs while they dined on rations from the camp's kitchen. Now keep in mind, this is not offered to regular guests. Viewing of photography is encouraged only by both. Now, do you ever get any aggressive males coming into an area like this, or is it pretty much mom and the kids? Pretty much, the, the males, they kind of wander through. The females will stay in their own area, so they get, we get to know them. The males will wander through. We had a big male here a, a couple days ago. I'd like to see him again, actually. But well, he was, maybe he's, not. <laughs> he's, twi he's twice as big as she is. Wow. What a great idea. So all your garbage. All the food waste. All yeah. the food waste. Gets, gets consumed by the bears. That yep. is fantastic. And it keeps them away from camp, you were saying as we well. We have no smell because we take it out every day um, from the whole resort. We have no smell over at the resort to uh, to attract the bears over there, so. Wow. And even if they do, I mean, they'll <laughs> occasionally come over to the island, but they don't find any food, so they won't come back. Could we show the audience exactly what the uh, deterrent is? It's this a is, rake. <laughs> this is the best bear intimidation tool I've ever found actually is a nice big leaf rake. It's got a few, this one's getting worn out a bit. I've hit bears a few times with this one, so they've never chewed on it though actually. That's not where the teeth are missing. It's just that uh, it's starting to get worn out from the scraping. But it's a very intimidating thing for a uh, black bear, these, uh, these rakes. So plus actually you gotta have attitude too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? What a great way to break up your fishing day to come out here and check these things. Great. How long have you been doing it? Oh, I don't know actually. It's got to be 10, 12, yeah. oh, more than that actually. Probably yeah. 15 years or so actually we started doing this. Oh boy. Well, I think we better give them the rest of the food and let them do their thing. This mm -hmm. is fantastic. I really appreciate you sharing this with us. No man. problem. I have fantastic. a pleasure doing it. Oh, he wants, oh. To get to the he wants the good yeah, stuff. He wants the good stuff. <laughs> fishing Canada Hotspots, yeah. the ultimate fishing guide presents Getting There. Today's hotspot is a rock pile called Castle Rock. Deep water surrounds it, and walleye lurk in the dark crevices, waiting for an easy meal. Live bait is a sure bet, but try casting crankbaits over the top when the wind is blowing. For more hotspots like this one, check out our website. To get to Arrington's, we took Highway 400 North to 69 North, and then took Highway 17 Northwest to Wawa. From there, we headed northeast on 101 and then north to 547 to Hawk Junction, where we boarded the Algoma train that took us to the landing at Lake Wabatangushi. Visit fishingcanada.com for more details. Fish in Canada was brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, serious bug protection. Prince Craft Boats. The more you know, the better we look. And Mercury, number one on the water. Closed captioning provided by Ontario Tourism. Go fish in Ontario.com. For more Fish in Canada, visit fishincanada.com. <laughs>